Hi everyone, my name is Glady Mar. I'm the wet clay instructor here at the Firestone Art Studio and Cafe. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step instruction of how to make this little soap dish out of wet clay. Um, here I have a squared off version and a rounded off version. They're essentially the same thing. I tried to keep it pretty simple in design. Um, so it's pretty flat on the top. It includes three little drainage holes as well as little feet on the bottom, so it's slightly elevated. So super sweet. Like that. So with the kit that I'm going to be introducing you to, you're going to have a template of the squared off version and the rounded version. So you can choose whichever one you like best, and you can also choose whichever color you, you would like it to be glazed in. We have 10 stoneware colors to choose from. At the moment, um, an example of this is sea salt. It's a matte glaze with crystals. And then there's green tea, which is a kind of semi-gloss, sometimes matte um, glaze as well. So you have a few options there. So let's get started. I am gonna go through what is included in the kit, as well as what you'll need at home, and then followed by a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to make this piece. Let me set these apart. Okay. So here's our bag, hand-built soap dish kit. And inside you're gonna find a template. Like I said, it's a rounded one and a squared off one. You can choose whichever one you like best. Okay. You'll also receive a pound of clay nicely wrapped so it is still moist enough to use. A bit of slip. This is what we're going to use to adhere the feet to the dish, right? And then a toothpick as well. It will come much in handy as well as a brush to use your slip. So that's essentially all you'll need to make it at home not including some things that you might already have at home, which include a drop cloth like this. This is just a painter's cloth, it's linen. Anything that is cotton based will work really well. It's just so that the clay doesn't stick to any hard surface. And as well as any of this like porous fibrous material like this will also absorb a little bit of water from the clay, making it easier to work with. You'll also need a rolling pin like this one, this one's quite small. Anything that's cylindrical like this will work. I've used, you know, glass glasses before. Anything like this will work. We're not really rolling out a lot of clay. You'll also need something that's about a quarter of an inch. Right now I'm using these yard sticks and you can see they're quite thin there. What we're gonna be using this for, if you haven't followed any of our videos before this, we will use them on each side of the clay when we're rolling it out. That way we get a nice even thickness of the clay and you don't get kind of that bumpiness that sometimes happens. So really anything that's about a quarter of an inch will work. Anything from a really thin book to magazines, anything like that. So as you can see, this is my setup where I have both of my yardsticks on each side and my rolling pin here. What you also might need just for cleanup will be a sponge with a little bit of water, as well as any kind of card that's pretty flexible like this, a plastic card. We're gonna be using that to compress the clay once it's rolled out. So right now I'm just using a Firestone clay pen gift card, but you can really use anything that you might have in your wallet or laying around. You also might want to blow dry the clay before you start um, cutting it out and that's only because if you blow dry it just for a few minutes it will actually make it a lot easier to work with and less likely to kind of dent and all that kind of stuff. So I'll show you the difference um, with clay that isn't blow dried or dried out a bit and clay that is. If you don't have a blow dryer or if you don't want to you can also just roll out the clay wait about 30 minutes to an hour, depending how warm your house is, and then you can start on the project. Okay. 
go ahead, let's get started. Here I have my one pound of clay. So I'm going to go ahead and unravel that. Place it there. And any clay that you don't use, you can feel free to put it back in this plastic and hand it back to us once you're done with your project and we can adequately recycle that for you. But this is our one pound of clay here. As you can see, it's quite moldable, very soft, which is great. So what I'm gonna start doing is rolling it out. Um, I do have a technique to roll it out, so I'll explain that as I go. But first, I'm just gonna start rolling out my top layer, like so. Okay, and once I have it um, like this, where it's kind of starting to get long, I'm going to go ahead and flip it on one side and continue. That way I get a nice squared off slab of clay instead of one really long slab of clay. So I did that a few times. Now I'm going to flip it upside down. You see it has some texture just from the cotton. But once I roll it out a third time, that'll virtually disappear. Like so. Okay. And then one more time on its side. Like that. All right, that's pretty good. As you can see, once you start to reach that quarter of an inch thickness, it's really not gonna roll out anymore. So that's when you know you have bread thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up. The reason I do that is just so that it doesn't get too stuck under here. And then I'm going to take my card, cleaning it off, and I'm gonna start compressing it. So what I mean by that is I'll hold the card at an angle sort of like this, if the clay's here, like that. And what that's gonna do is just gonna, one, smooth out the surface of it, but also compress it. So if there's any air bubbles, they're gonna come to the surface. Like this. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Now this is where you can stop, blow dry it, or just wait um, about half an hour before you start your project. And I'm gonna show you the difference in what dried out, slightly dried out clay looks like compared to um, slightly wetter clay like this. So you can see it kind of flops when you put it down like that. And you can also easily indent it, right? I already see my fingerprints around there, but if I were to just gently indent it, it really goes through, right? Because it just has a lot of moisture in it and it's quite soft. In comparison, I have some clay here that I blow dry just for a few minutes. And if I were to indent it, it doesn't really indent as much. And it also has quite a strength to it there, right? So this is a lot easier to work with when it's a little bit drier like that so that's why I would recommend just waiting or blow drying it a bit so I'm gonna go ahead and start using this the clay that I already blow dried I'm gonna set this one aside so I don't need that anymore and place this one in front of me and I also don't need these yardsticks or the rolling pin anymore Okay, so now I have my piece of clay here. I'm just going to compress it one last time. All right, so now I'm ready to cut out the shape that I want. So for the purpose of this video, I think I'm going to go with the squared off one. So I'm going to place it on to my slab here. And sometimes I just like to run my finger along it because it will stick enough that makes it really easy to go in and cut it. 
throat. That's when I'll use this toothpick. And you don't want to go straight in like this and start to cut because what's going to happen is you're going to break the toothpick or you might end up cutting it in like an angle that you don't want. So usually what I'll do is I'll angle the toothpick kind of at an angle like this. And that way it runs along the side of the toothpick and the clay, like that. I, I didn't fully go in to the clay yet, I'm just tracing it at the moment. And once I've traced it, I'll take off the template and then actually cut it out. There we go. Lift up the template. And now I can start to cut, so go ahead. In following those lines sometimes you might have to go even a third time yep. like so you see there I made a little mistake but it's very easy to just mend that back Okay, so I'm going to take out all of this clay here that I don't need anymore. I will need a little bit of it left once I start to make the feet, but until then, it'll just sit on the side. So here I have my slab of clay. You see here I did make a little mistake there, which is totally fine. What I'm going to do is just smooth it out with my finger. What's great about this clay at the state of thickness is that it's very, very moldable. I'm going to go ahead and just smooth all that out. What I like to do too to smooth out these edges is I'll just run my fingers along the sides of it. Like so. You might be tempted to use water to smooth it out, but what's going to happen is it's going to the clay is going to get much, much softer and sticky and quite difficult to move. Well, that's why I like to just smooth it out with my finger. And at the end, if the, I do see that I need to smooth it out a little bit more, that's when I use a sponge because I know that I'm not going to be touching it anymore. All right, I'm going to turn it upside down and do the same thing. You see it has this texture here. I don't mind the texture, so I'm going to leave it, but if you do mind it and you don't want it you can go ahead and compress it one more time you just want to make sure that you're compressing it quite lightly so that you're not changing the shape of it like that right go ahead and smooth out all those edges like so okay now that I have it here, I'm going to go ahead and write my name on it, just because once you put the feet on it, it might be a little bit difficult. So I know my feet are going to go in this general area here, about here and here, and the drainage holes are going to go here. So I can either put my name here, 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 or here. So I'm going to go ahead and just smooth out this area just so I can get nice smooth surface to write my name in and then go ahead and put your name in okay nice all right so i'm going to turn it right side up again and i'm going to start to make this little angle here so you can see all of the edges are kind of tapered up like so, it's just kind of a design choice that I liked. So I'm gonna start doing that by just layering it out like that. And you can choose not to do this. You can leave it as is, it's up to you. Like so, it's very easy. I'm just pinching on those sides, like so. All right, now I can move on to making the feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this extra clay that I have and grab a little bit of clay. You really don't need a lot for this. So I'll show you how much, kind of like a marble size of clay here. Like so. 
And you can vary the size of the feet too, like if you want them to be a little bit taller. Mine are quite short, but squared off on this one. I believe on the rounded one, I just did little round feet just to match it. So it's really up to you. You can do rounded feet, you can do squared off feet, anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and make four of those little balls there. I'm just rounding them off in my hand. It's also like I'm pressing the clay, like so. And let's see what we're gonna need. Okay. All right. So here we have our little feet here. Just gonna pick them up. Make sure they're all kind of the same size. This one's being slightly larger. I'm gonna take off some of that clay. And then round it off again. All right, so yeah, there they are. And I'm gonna go ahead and start to shape them. For the squared off ones, like so, I start by just pinching all of the sides at once, like this, so that it starts to get square. And then I'll rotate it so that the sides that I haven't pinched yet, I'll start to pinch. So these sides, and I'll hold the top. And you can do this a few times until it starts getting that nice cube shape. Like so. Like that, right? So it has kind of that cube shape. These are kind of a bit taller than these, but I kind of actually like that it's tapered at one end. So I might lean into that and make just one end narrower than the other. Let me go ahead and do that for all of them. And then for the rounded ones, all I really did was in the same position or the same size, I just squished it. Like so. And if one side's getting, like this one's getting a little too long, I can easily just tap it on the table and get it a little bit rounded again, like so. Yeah, there's two, I'll round this one off. Looks like a marshmallow. <laughs> All right. Smack those edges down like that. All right. And our last one. So there are our four little feet. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this upside down like so. And I'm going to go ahead and place the feet where I want it to go. So that looks pretty good, right? So what I like to do before I actually attach the feet, I'm going to go ahead and make the drainage holds first just so that once I already have the feet there, I don't have to really manipulate the clay any more than I have to. All right, so I'm gonna place these here, or my feet, and then I like to place one drainage hole between each of the feet here and then one in the middle. So it's pretty symmetrical. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. And then I'm gonna go ahead and trace around the feet so I know where I'm going to apply slip and glue them. All right. 
there it is, right? I have a little design there going for me. So I have the three green inch holes. I'm just going to start to widen them up a bit. So how I do that is I'll place the little toothpick in there like so, and then I'll just start to rotate it around. And right now it's between two of my fingers here so that I'm not moving the clay too much. Like so, I'm just going to start moving it around like that. And it's okay if it starts to like bring out the clay like that because all I really will do in that case is I will just compress it back down. And go ahead again. So there's one. And I'm gonna position my hands so that when I do this next one, it's between my hand, my fingers like so. Make that hole. And you don't really have to make three holes. I just like how it looks, right? You can make more than that, less than that. It's really up to you. Like that, there's two. Move down to the other one. Yeah, make sure you don't kind of go too far and then end up stabbing yourself with it. I know these aren't too sharp, but you don't want to hurt yourself. So that's why I have my fingers positioned in a way so that they're not going to be in the way of my toothpick. All right, so there they are. And now this is quite messy. So again, I'm just going to start to compress it down like that. I'll compress it down once and then I'll go back in and really kind of cement, make that hole a little bit more rounded like so and then compress those sides again So that's nicely compressed now. I can flip it over and attach the feet. So to properly attach the feet or really anything that you're attaching with clay, you want to slip and score. So slip and score means that you're making little lines like this, just adding texture to the clay wherever it's going to be adhered. So here and on your slab. And then adding slip, which is just clay with a lot of water. And what that's going to do is going to get into these crevices and make it nice and together, right? If you don't add enough slip or if you don't add enough texture or any texture, what's going to happen is once it starts to dry, it might separate. And that's how you end up with pieces cracking and that kind of thing. So to avoid that, we're gonna make sure we're gonna slip and score every part of this project here. And that's really it, they're just little X's all along, like so, right? So now I can move on to grabbing my slip, so here it is. And I only really need a little bit, so I'm going to grab a brush and go ahead and mix that a bit. If you notice it's not this kind of consistency, go ahead and add a little bit more water and mix it in a little bit more and it should be like this. Alright, so I'm going to grab some slip and add it to all of my pieces, like so. 
a little bit there too. and there we are right so I'm going to start to press down on those sides to really make sure it's nice and secure what you can also do is put one or two fingers under the clay and just press down like so same thing there here Now you might end up with some slip on the outside like this, and that's totally okay. I sometimes prefer that. That way I know that I had enough, enough slip between the two pieces. To smooth that out, what you want to do is just grab that same brush you use and just get rid of most of the slip off of it. And then go ahead and brush those sides. Like so. Yeah, you can use it to smooth out anything else like so you just don't want a lot of slip on the brush that way it's not getting too wet you just want to smooth out what's already on there instead of adding more all right so yeah there are my feet they're nice and secure like so what i'm going to do is go ahead and flip it right side up just so that both my feet or all four of them can eventually be nice and equal right so if you're finding that one side is a little bit taller than the other you can go ahead and smack down some of those feet to the sides you want like this one's pretty good i kind of like it it's m much more elevated than this one but i kind of actually like that so now that it's in its final position where i'm going to leave it to dry i'm just going to go ahead and smooth out any areas that might be just not how I want them to be. All right. Sometimes you might end up having to bring in those edges higher, like so. So now I'm going to go ahead and take my sponge with just barely any water in it, so it's quite damp, and then I'm just going to run along the sides of the soap dish here just to smooth everything out. And you don't want to press too hard because if you do you might end up actually moving the clay back down. So yeah. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it where it is. It will dry um, to the touch within about three to four days. It does take about a week for it to be bone dry enough for us to put it in the kiln. Um, so between those like three to four days to weeks, you can go ahead and bring it into the studio. And we will uh, let it dry a bit, fire it uh, twice, and then dip it in the glaze of your choice. So it's about a two week turnaround for these pieces and that's only because it has to go into the firing process twice and will be hand dipped by um, us in the studio. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope to see some of your really great uh, projects coming into the studio soon and hope you have happy holidays. Bye bye.